Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's, it's been a minute since I posted a video. I've, I've been going through some family stuff, so I haven't had time to uh, make something real quick. So I'm actually at work right now, so I just wanted to make a quick video because I, I haven't posted since I think week one. So I, I really want to catch up. So I'm just going to throw all my thoughts of what I've been thinking about, what I've seen, and where I feel the Chargers are at right now. So my videos, they're normally kind of out there and they're more normally uh, not very organized. So this is going to be a lot less organized, but I'm just going to throw whatever I have within these next, hopefully 10 ish, 15 minutes. <clears throat> but I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm just speechless with this Chargers team and, and in a good way. And I, there's some concerns. Yes. But overall, I'm, I'm honestly really impressed with this team. Um, I, I'll just start off with this. We have, we finally have the right coach. We finally, finally have the right coach. It's so exciting. It's, I, I, I've, I'm not the most seasoned Charger fan, but I, I've been around. It's been 13, 14 years, I think. I started off in 08, um, as a Charger fan, the first game I saw was a Chargers New England game, and Norv Turner was a head coach. It was his second year, and I thought Norv was solid. I thought he was a solid head coach. And as the years went on, like uh, from what I remember, there was a his offense was very. It's Norv Turner. It's it's going to be four verticals. You're going to have the deep passes, and that's about it. Abandon the running game, and I thought for the longest time that was the formula, and. As a Charger fan, my most favorite season, the season that I think sticks out the most, was the 2009 season when the Chargers went 13-3. and Especially when I started being a Charger fan, the Chargers always started off to a slow start. And I feel like that's always been the story. Um, the Chargers start off 1-4, and 1-5, and five, and then make these deep runs in, in the season and end up going to the playoff and losing in the divisional or AFC championship game. And then as time went on, it started to where they would start off slow and then lose these close games. And to me, I didn't know what the issue was. I thought Norv was the solution, but those last two seasons with him, they were just really problematic. And then we had Mike McCoy, and then we had Anthony Lynn, and then for that first year Anthony Lynn was head coach, I thought he was a solution too. I'll never forget, I think it was that Monday Night Denver game, his first year, where uh, where they're trying to run it in the goal line and Melvin Gordon gets stuff on third and goal and Anthony Lynn comes out to the sideline starts flexing his muscles trying to say like power up uh, toughen up come on get in there and I thought that was dope and then the 2018 season I and this Twitter account that I'm currently running isn't as old as the 2018 season but and my other one I still think it's active um, I, have to, I don't remember what it's called, but in that 2018 season, by week nine or week 10, it's when we played the Bengals, I think. Um, no, it was after we played the Broncos and they beat us by a field goal. Um, I realized Anthony Lynn's not the solution because the Chargers were starting off sloppy. They weren't very disciplined. They, they were either getting these high leads where they were winning like, 28 to like 3 or 28 to 10 and then they allow the other team to come back and make it close like in that Tennessee game and the, the Seahawks game or they were like playing from behind and catching up to win like that Steelers game and they, they weren't very organized I love Phillip Rivers he's my guy I honestly he's my favorite quarterback of Chargers history I, if you ask me right now if I pick Justin Herbert over Philip Rivers, I pick Justin Herbert. And I love Philip Rivers. I love Philip Rivers. The dude's my guy. But Rivers, especially that last season, wasn't that, that, that 2018 season, he was starting to slow down. I don't know if it was Ken Wisden Hunt. I don't know what it was. But our offense wasn't as dynamic as it was. And I felt like Anthony Lynn didn't make those adjustments. And then here comes Brandon Staley. And he's just doing everything right. He, I love the way he talks. I love the way he seems passionate. He actually seems like he cares about his job. 
It actually seems like he cares about his players. It actually seems like he has a game plan. Well, I, my favorite hire, my my, the coach that I wanted the Chargers to hire was Brandon Staley. And the reason I knew more, or knew, I don't know why you want to say more. The reason why he was on my radar was because of the Lightning Round podcast with Jamie Hoyle and Garrett Sisley, which you guys should watch, by the way, if you haven't. And <clears throat> and the more I kept listening and the more I kept looking up to him, I thought he was the guy. And then the Chargers hire him, and then I had this really bad feeling. I'm like, oh, no, what if he's not the guy? What if he's all hype? What if he's just like, what if he's like Matt Nagy or... What was it? What's this? Adam Gase, or what if he's just like a Mike McCoy, where they were with these really good teams, but they weren't that piece. So, for example, like uh, Adam Gase was the coach of Peyton Manning, but he didn't coach Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning coached him pretty much. And like you have Mike McCoy, same thing, Peyton Manning. But come on, it's it's he was a coordinator for Peyton Manning, but then again, it's Peyton Manning. And then you have uh, Matt Nagy, which is like, come on, it's it's Patrick Mahomes, like, he, he, it's Patrick Mahomes, he's special. And I started getting those uh, <laughs> those bad thoughts where I'm like, I don't know, what if he's not the guy? But in in being a Charger fan over these 13, 14 years, I've grown very pessimistic. I've been very negative. I've been very uh, what's the word? I just, I just don't feel comfortable with them when they have a lead or if something good happens. And honestly, I'm still waiting for that bad thing to happen. But it, as weeks, as the weeks go on, that feeling gets reduced less and less and less, especially after this last game. So, <laughs> with that being said, I, we have our coach. We have our coach. Brandon Staley is amazing. When he went on that fourth and seven in our inside our own, was it twenty five or in their twenty, and he went for it. I'm like, I don't care if we. I, I mean, I care if we get it, but get it or not, that was the right call. That was the right call, and I can tell you, Mike McCoy wouldn't have gone for it, and if he would have gone for it, it would have been a delay half pack, uh, delay draw. Anthony Lynn wouldn't have gone for it, and if he would have gone for it, it would have been a really predictable screen. And Norv, he would just call four verticals, and we all know how that turns out. End up in an interception. <laughs> but my, that that fourth and seven, watching that game, I'm like, this is gonna be the outline outlier of the game. This is the, gonna be the play that either kills it for us or puts us back in it. And I had a quick second where I'm like what if they just call what if they just try to do the thing where they try to get the players offside and and they went for it and I'm like awesome and then they got it I'm like even better so it's just it's exciting it's really exciting to see where this team is heading it's exciting to see what our team is is capable of doing and I'm just excited to see where we're heading and what's gonna happen and I, sophomore slump is the bad word to use because I, I think it's more of a regression. I thought Justin Herbert was going to get a regression. And regression I don't think is necessarily a bad thing in a sense where the stats don't always match up to what the story says. And I thought that was going to be an issue. That was going to be the story. I thought with, uh, with this new complex offense and with uh, new head coach, new coordinator, new pretty much everything's new it was going to be a slow start which in a way it kind of was and it still kind of is but it's way way further than what i expected um it's it's worth way far along than where i was expecting to be because i i was expecting more of a like a 25 13 interception season from justin herbert but just thinking that because it's it's the second year. The NFL is complex, and 25, 13, 25 touchdowns and 13 picks for 4,000 yards isn't a terrible season. It's about average, um, but I was expecting something like that. But the way Herbert's heading, he looks like he's projected to hit like 50,000, or not 50,000, 5,000 yards, uh, 45 touchdowns, and like 10, 12 interceptions. So 
honestly, I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just amazed. Not even 12 interceptions. I think it's like nine or something. I don't, I might be wrong, but I, I'm just excited to see Justin Herbert taking that step. Justin Herbert, I, I'll again be also the first to admit that when he got drafted, I called him Mitchell Trubisky 2.0. I was wanted to uh, and I'm so glad I'm like wrong about that I'm so glad we found our guy I'm so glad about being wrong and it's just exciting I still I'll get into debates with people on Twitter that I don't think the Chargers are there yet and I still don't think they're there yet I still think there's a few pieces that are missing I I've seen a lot of people char uh, rank the Chargers a top five in power ranking and I feel like when you're within the top five of power ranking that's when things kind of can get a little murky because everyone's literally just right there at least if you ask my opinion the top five is usually there's not much of a difference uh, everyone's right about there and usually the top ten is like you can make it you just have to make these adjustments and right now I wouldn't say I saw that, uh, what was it, uh, the NFL power ranking, I think he had, they have the Chargers at 6 or 5, I might be wrong, and I saw some other power ranking with the Chargers for 3, and with this running D, I would, with the running D that we have, and with Odea Bushi getting injured, and, and still having some missing pieces, and still trying to adjust to where we need to be and the offense I, I think they're almost there there's just a few things that need to be cleaned up I would mark the Chargers as like a seven or an eight in, in my power ranking um, just because there there's still some adjustments that are needing to be made that being said if the Chargers can beat the Ravens and pretty much go five and one from the start that we have beating the high power Raiders at the time, the high power offensive Raiders, beating the our divisional champion Chiefs, beating probably one of the best teams in the AFC in the Cleveland Browns in a shootout. And if they if they beat the Brown I mean, the Ravens, if they beat the Ravens and are able to stop that running game or slow it down a bit and slow J Lamar Jackson down a bit, my opinion my, my opinion might change. And I, I've i been seeing rumors that Brandon Staley's been eyeing Akeem Hicks, which uh, which makes sense because he, he is part of that Vic Fangio tree and he is coming from that familiar defense. I If they get Hicks and they make those small adjustments and the offense can start clicking a little more, which honestly I don't think that's they're not that far from there. I think we're it. I am trying to take the season one game at a time because throughout the years I've gotten burned pretty bad. I've gotten burned in that 2019 season where Nate Kading missed two field goals against the Jets. Um, and then Sean, I think it was Sean Green ripped out like a 50 yard run where Cromartie could have tackled him and then didn't. And then there was that 2008 season where the Chargers started off. Uh, Four and eight ended up winning out eight and eight and beat the Colts, but then got destroyed by the Steelers and the playoffs. Pretty much it was ball control. And then the 2013 season where the Chargers, I I thought they they had something there at that time. Looking back, I don't think so. They they definitely were better than what well, were playing better than what they were. And then 2018 season, and then always, I don't know, I feel like the Chargers always have talent, but there's always some sort of thing that happens. And though I'm still waiting for the bad thing to happen, and I'm still waiting for something to happen, that that bad thing to happen, I, that feeling is getting reduced, and it's feeling less likely as weeks go on. And this team looks different. This team looks different. It doesn't look like the 2018 Chargers where they were undisciplined, they were playing from behind, or and winning and getting some lucky calls like against the Steelers or where they're having a high lead and 
and then letting the teams come back in or playing down to the level versus I think it was like that week 10 week 11 game versus the Bengals where they should have blown them out but they were just in that game the Bengals were still in that game and that just that drove me crazy and then there's the 2009 Chargers who have a place a special place in my heart where they won an 11 game winning streak but there were still a lot of missing problems with that with that defense and it, I don't know like this this team looks different they look like they're starting to get things this coaching staff looks different this this overall team looks different they look happier they look more energized everyone seems to be more I guess I don't know I don't want to say the word positive but they it's different it's different and I we're only it's only we're only in week what six we're heading to week six and I know the season's not over and a lot can happen. The Chargers could still go five and five and twelve. I don't think that will happen. But I don't know. Like this team feels different. I'm trying not to get my hopes too high up. I'm trying to take it one week at a time. So I don't let so I don't get burned as bad. But this team looks different and it's all thanks to Brandon Staley. Justin Herbert too. Derwin James being healthy. Bosa. There's a lot of factors, but the big one is Brandon Staley. Because all the other coaches in the league, the new coaches, have a losing record, except for Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley is the only one with a winning record. But I will say, I'm glad we're not playing the Lions this week, especially after seeing that Dan Campbell press, uh, press conference, because uh, I think his players really do like him, and I think the Lions have the right guy for the job. It's just going to take some time. And off topic, but... If you ask me, I, I'm, I'm giving the Lions as my underdog this week just because of how I think the Lions are going to play hard for their coach this week, especially against the Packers. Off topic, but anyways, that's my video. I got to get back to work. I hope you guys like it. Feel free to like, subscribe, share. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Boltology, uh, Bolt underscore ology uh, podcast, I think, or just Bolt underscore ology. And uh, thanks, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get my videos up every Wednesday. I've been going through some family uh, stuff that I needed to take care of. So it's been hard for me to put time and make these videos. But uh, thanks, guys, and have a good one.